Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be looking at um, a really old Dell Optiplex 790. We're going to be taking out the hard disk and we're going to be inserting uh, an SSD drive. Now this is this is quite a good one because uh, the SSD drive has come out of an old HP laptop and we're not going to do anything with it but we're going to insert it into um, this machine, so it's an M.2 drive, we're going to be using an adapter, we're going to insert it into this machine, we're going to boot up and then we're going to um, run through a few bits and pieces just to make sure the system's updated um, and then that's pretty much it. So here we've got an M.2 SATA adapter from Sabrent. So these are really good. Uh, we, we like these a lot. Um, it makes use of old equipment that you've got lying around. Uh, you can convert it into a two and a half inch SSD drive. So that's exactly what we're going to do today. So what we've got here is an M.2 128 gig SSD drive. So this was just out of an old HP machine. Uh, we've had it in the cupboard for a few years, so we thought we might as well make use of it. So we bought ourselves one of these little adapters and we just lift out, lift off the top, and you can see here that it supports four different sizes all the way up to 2280, which is what this is. And we're going to, what we're going to do nice and simple we just insert that into the case we then take our little tiny screw to secure the drive down on the plate like that lid goes back on only goes on one way and then each of these four little screws go in the side to Hold the cover in place. So that's it. That's the drive inserted into the adapter. As you can see, it's a SATA. So it's SATA 3, 6 gigabit a second, or up to 6 gigabit a second, um, which should be adequate for our machine that we've got. So the next thing is we need to get this into the machine, set the BIOS, and then we're ready to build. So we're going to be using this cage. Um, first of all, we want to make sure that it's going to fit into the Dell drive cage. So we're going to take this out. We're going to remove the old hard drive and this should just unclip. You should just pull out the side, which they do. There we go. So that's the drive removed. Now we just need to see, make sure that the new one is going to fit in there which it is, so that's perfect. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to screw this to the bottom, to the cage. That's one in. That's it, just gonna make sure they're done up nice and tight. Stop it rattling around. And then this just, in theory, should just connect in here. I'm gonna slot that in to the drive cage. Like that. And then we can reattach our SATA cable and connect our power. And that's that bit taken care of. So we've got our SATA disk inserted. Now we just need to get the machine fired up, change some BIOS settings and continue. Once the system's booted up, we're gonna go into our BIOS settings. We're gonna just have a look at it. So we've got uh, legacy boot enabled and it's detected the disk. So we're gonna leave that as it is at the moment, because what we want to do is we want to see if there's a BIOS update for this to see if it fixes the date issue. Um, so what we are going to do is we're going to just let this boot up. So we're going to say 
escape to cancel and we're going to see if this machine will boot on its own now bearing in mind i believe that this probably has a um, an install on there that used legacy boot so we should be good to go so let's just escape and see if the machine will boot up okay so we've got an issue with the display so we'll change that And there we go, so we've managed to boot into Windows, so that was pretty quick. It's good and responsive, so let's now go and see if we can open a web browser and see if we can go to the Dell support site, dell.com slash support, and let's see if we've got any drivers available. Okay, so this is the correct machine. So we're going to click on check for updates okay so the only one that we're interested in at the moment is the BIOS so we're going to select BIOS and see if we've got a BIOS available so we've got one from 2018 <coughs> so we're going to download and install this BIOS because we were on A10 so this is on A22 this BIOS so we're going to say OK to that so we're on A10 installed, so this is from, you can see the version here, 2089 V10, and we're going to go 2120 V17 is the video, which is correct, anti-theft, <coughs> okay, so we're going to say OK, that's now flashing. So after the BIOS is updated, we're going to come back in to the BIOS. We're going to hit F12 to go into the BIOS. We're going to go into BIOS setup. We're now going to go down and have a look. So we can see here, we've got our A22 version installed. Nothing else has changed. Let's have a look at the boot sequence. So we've still got legacy and UEFI. Let's come down and see if we've got anything else in security. Everything else looks the same. Let's go into date and time. So we're still showing the uh, two digit date and time. So it looks like the BIOS is not compatible with 2020. But we're going to go in, we're going to set the month anyway, uh, because it has still kept the same date and time, which is better because it hadn't last time. Let's just get, run through everything to make sure that everything looks in order. Okay, so we're now going to enable TPM. We're going to apply that. And we're going to set it as active. And we're going to apply that. We're going to need TPM if we want to do any uh, sort of encryption or anything. But um, because this machine is so old, um, we're not going to worry too much about that. Everything else looks okay. Right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to exit. We're going to leave legacy mode on. And then we are booted again into Windows. Okay, so let's have a look at our machine. Go into our properties. Second generation running at 3.1 gigahertz, 8 gig of RAM. We're going to have to leave this one on legacy boot. Uh, Windows 10 Pro 20H2 versions, that was what was already installed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and run a Windows update. And we're going to install these. 
as you can see here it doesn't meet the minimum requirements for windows 11 however that's not an option uh, or it's not a, not an issue for us uh, because we we know we can install windows 11 on this machine if we need to or if we want to that is so once the updates are done um, we're going to give it another reboot and then this machine will be quick enough to re-gift to someone Okay, so once all the Windows updates are completed, um, what you wanna do is you wanna go into your home option, and then we're gonna go into system, and then we're gonna to go to about, and we're just gonna have a look at the machine to make sure that we're on the right version, 21H2, so that's the latest version um, that this machine can get. We've done multiple Windows updates until nothing else can be installed. And now we want to make sure that our device manager is showing us everything being installed and there's nothing outstanding and no issues. So we're going to click on device manager. As you can see here, everything is installed nicely. And we've got our security TPM processor. So this is trusted platform module 1.2. So that's, <clears throat> that's why it won't run Windows 11. But we have got a fix for that. So that's it in terms of this machine. Um, boot up times, so from the old hard disk that we had, um, that took uh, around about three, three to five minutes to install. Um, this boots up in under 15 seconds now, so a much better uh, boot up time. And this will now go off to um, a local charity. So if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.